Hi everyone, my name is Joseph, and today I wanted to share some more games that I picked up for my uh, my PlayStation 3. And one game that's actually not for my PS3, and that's the one we're going to start with since uh, it's the uh, the oddball out, but I don't mean that in a bad way uh, because it is part of a series and I'm not the type of individual who has preferences towards their systems. Although I do mostly game on PlayStation, I have equal love for uh, Nintendo and Microsoft as well. Uh, but I did get an Xbox 360 game. It's been a long while since I bought a 360 game. If one is unaware, uh, when it comes to me personally, uh, the reason why I don't like to collect for the 360 or the PS2 and the Xbox is essentially anything with a DVD or CD uh, since they scratch easy, a bit more easier, a bit more easily uh, compared to Blu-ray discs. Um, that's why I don't typically collect for these systems. I have a few, a few rules though. For example, if it's an exclusive and not available digitally, then I'll go ahead and purchase the game. And this one is not available. Uh, it, it's not, and it's not an exclusive per se, but it's the uh, Call of Horrors, the first one. Uh, to my understanding, it's only available on the 360 and PC, not the P, uh, not the PlayStation 3. Um, so that's why I made the choice to get it. I've heard some pretty good things about this series, more specifically for the first uh, two, and then the last one. It's a uh, tetralogy, so four games. Um, and uh, the first one is about uh, an individual who is a holy man. And uh, he actually uses verses as a quote-unquote weapon. So <laughs> that's pretty cool, I think. It's also set... Oh, no, this is the... It's a Wild Wild West setting. I was getting this confused with the sequel that I got for it, uh, which is for the PlayStation 3. Uh, excuse me, everyone. I'm just wiping it down real quick because my cat, she apparently drank some water before she came in. <laughs> She's leaving some little droplets. Anywho, um... But for my place, my PlayStation 3, I got the sequel, which is actually a prequel. A uh, Kav Horror is bound, a uh, bound uh, in blood. I was going to say by. I was like, that doesn't look like a B. A uh, bound in blood. Uh, so in this one, the setting is in the Civil War. And you actually do play as the protagonist in the first game and his brother, the Macaw brothers. And in the first, uh, in the first game, while well, he was a holy man, uh, in the second game, that character is, is much different. He's a heathen. And um, as I said, it's based in the Civil War, so they've done some, they being the brothers, have done some atrocities, and so that's why they make the decision uh, to leave the Confederacy. Uh, I thought that was a pretty cool setting. Not too many games are set during the Civil War period. The only one I could really think of is that history uh, game, uh, but uh, I, I don't mean to uh, throw, uh, I don't mean to have disrespect towards that game, but I doubt it's going to be at the same quality compared to... Uh, a game made by a gaming uh, studio or publisher, All right? Hopefully that makes sense. And again, I don't mean to be offensive with that comment. So I got these two games, again, the first one for my 360, and the second one for my PS3. Uh, I don't, I'm not, more than likely not going to get the third one, Cough Horrors um, Cartel, I believe it's called, just because I've heard that it's not with the same uh, characters, it's with different characters and uh, essentially, um, it's just not the best, essentially. That's what I've heard. Um, but I did get this digital, the fourth one in the series, called uh, Gunslinger. I got that for my 360. Uh, actually, it was on sale this past week for only about two bucks, I think it was. So that is pretty cool. Um, so that's what I got with that system. Actually, everyone, give me your patience, please. I want to make sure the third game, because it's going to be another game I'm going to discuss that I will get the the naming conventions are uh, mixed up sometimes. Okay, yeah, so the third game, Call of Harvest, The Cartel. Yes, yeah, so that's the one I more than likely will not be picking up just because I've heard uh, not the best of things about that, uh, about that uh, game specifically. Um, all right, cool, let me continue. So the next one that I decided to pick up, so this is because of my Vita since I was getting into a lot of racing games recently. Uh, I decided, I, or decided, I realized that I didn't have the first one in this series. And supposedly, I always hear good things about it. People say that either the first one's better or the sequel, which is Sonic Racing Transformed. And the first one is Sonic and Sega All-Stars All Racing. Um, so yeah, so I decided to pick it up because I do I have been playing uh, Transformed on my Vita. And I really own that on my PS3 as well. This is one I have not yet owned. And uh, as I said, I've heard really fun, great things about this one. So that's why I decided to go ahead and pick it up. Uh, why not, right, in case uh, better now than in the future where I might regret it. Excuse me, everyone, my cat, she is trying to stand on top of my games as if it's a uh, throne of some sort or a stepping stool. <laughs> uh, moving forward, since I got Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, uh, I've always had an inkling, or not an inkling, excuse me, a, a desire to try this game out, but 
I've always heard at first negative things, but then as time went on, I heard more positive things. And then uh, uh, now I'm hearing that essentially it's a hidden gem. So it's been enough, it's been enough in the uh, time oven uh, where one, uh, one's, two, one's many opinions have changed about this game. The one I'm talking about is Sonic Unleashed. Uh, this is one of the last Sonic games where the, say, uh, the studio Sega was attempting to actually have a story. So this has CGI elements and uh, uh, well, a story, as I said. So that's pretty cool. This is the one where Sonic transforms into a Warhog. So <laughs> as one could see, well, not a Warhog, I'm sorry. Um, well, a Warhog, yeah, he's a Hedgehog. Uh, so that's the side you see over here. There's two kinds of levels in this game. There's the typical Sonic levels and then a kind of beat em up with slight, very uh, small, minimum RPG elements uh, with the Warhog levels. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to playing this. Um, I don't yet have Sonic Adventure digitally, but I'm gonna get that on my 360. I'm just waiting for that on, a, not my 360, excuse me, on my Xbox One. That's one that's uh, backwards compatible. Um, but I've been waiting for that to go on sale, but it seems like it doesn't go on sale too often. Anywho though, continuing forward. So this one is a little bit, not one I'll typically buy. So let me explain my rationale behind this one. So uh, I was watching videos about uh, hidden gems for PlayStation 3 since I felt like for the most part I got all the games that I wanted. And in fact, there's a video on this channel. One of my, I think it's the first gaming video that I did where I shared my purchases. I explained that those were going to be my last set of PS3 games I'll be buying. <laughs> Um, uh, I was wrong about that, obviously, right? So where did this occur? Why did I start buying all these PS3 games? I do want them, but I'm not just getting them because I want to collect them. These are all games I do want to play. And the reason being is because, as I said, um, just for fun in the background, um, I put on a video about hidden gem for PS3, hidden PS3 uh, games. Excuse me, let me start that over. Hidden gems on the PS3. And uh, for the most part, I had most of the games, right? But there's always a few that I made the choice I don't want to get because I'm not going to lie. I'm going to say that was being a little bit highbrow or a little bit elitist in terms of storytelling. So if they didn't have the best of storytelling narratively, I thought to myself, well, why would I want to get that, right? A really good example about this would be Sonic Unleashed. Uh, yeah, supposedly it's a funny game, but I mean, it's Sonic. Why would I want to get that? I want to be a quote-unquote serious gamer who plays a serious quote-unquote games, right? Uh, I realized I was being too much of an elitist with that mindset, being silly. The whole point of games is to have fun. Although I do appreciate storytelling and character arcs when they are present. And that's just one aspect of video games, right? Um, so this is where this comes into play. This is made by Platinum Games. Essentially, I see it being compared a lot to Power Gym uh, Warriors or Power Gym Fighters. That's for the Dreamcast. Uh, it's a fighting game, essentially, but it does have a slight story. And... Um, and yeah, so I've just heard some pretty good things about this game and I decided to pick it up. I never picked it up beforehand because it was a fighting game and I was like, well, I don't really play fighting games. It's not really my genre, but um, I shouldn't discriminate, right? If, they, if there's a story or a gameplay that's quite fun that people are attracted to, then I should check that out as well. So I made the choice to pick up Arnike Reigns. I don't think I've been showing off the back of these games. So excuse me, let me quickly... Do that, so Sonic Unleashed, and then here's the back of it. The difference is night and day. Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, here is the front, and then here is the back of it. Call of Horrors, Bound and Blood. The Macaws are coming. Call of Horrors for the 360. A no law out here except the one you make. All right, so thank you for your patience about that. Let's continue on. We're about halfway through the games. So the next one is the other uh, uh, Army, see Army series, the other series that I keep getting the titles confused. Uh, so this one is a Trilogy, not a not a trilogy like Call of Horrors, but it's Army of Two. Uh, so I'm not going to pick up the first one because I haven't heard really positive, great things about the first one. Um, and if I do pick it up, it'll be digitally for my 360, um, just because the PSB version. So I kind of have a weird rule. Some might judge me about this, but if there's no trophies um, associated with the game. I typically don't get it. I'll get the 360 version instead. So Army of Two that will have uh, trophies. I mean, excuse me, achievements, obviously, right? And so because of that, I might not be picking up Army of Two for my PS3 since I won't be playing it on my PS3. I'll be playing it 
on my 360. But I won't lie, I might be picking it up, I'm not entirely sure, just because I do like to have physical representations of games that I own, but I don't really do that for cross-gen games. Um, I just, any games that I actually play, I like to physically represent that. So more than likely, I won't be picking up the physical version for the PS3, because if I do get it, I'll be getting the digital version. Uh, but the, I got the sequel, Army of Two, the 40th day, and then I heard that the AI for single player, for solo play, was improved to your teammates' MI. Um, it, it's not as clunky as it was in the first game, but it could actually be useful as well. And then besides for that, I've also heard some good things about the, uh, the setting as well. Uh, compared to the first one, so that's pretty exciting, I suppose. Uh, this one does have the French language on the on the left hand, uh, right hand side, excuse me. <laughs> uh, but oh well, um, I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. This is probably the Canadian version, but it is Region One. Then I got the sequel. So this one I did get Army of Two, The Devil's Cartel, and the reason why I got it is because I did hear that it's it's, it's cheesy. But it's like an action movie. It's a lot of fun if one is just going in expecting uh, well action. And so I did pick up this uh, game's uh, 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 third uh, sequel, uh, the, the third game in the series. Uh, oops, I forgot to show off the back. So this one says Double or Nothing. Again, I'm going to have two, uh, The Devil's Cartel. And to reiterate, I more than likely will not be picking up Call of Juarez, uh, The Cartel, because I've heard uh, bad things about it. And it's not set in the Wild West nor in the Civil War period. It's set in the uh, War of Mexico modern day Mexico and instead of horses and things like that you drive cars and apparently the driving mechanic is not the best and none of the characters are from the first two games or in the third game they do make some slight references to the past games but it's just that just very minor references not really easter eggs just references uh, so yeah continuing forward so I saved these two for last just because I would argue uh, the, one of them is an exclusive and the other one is a, a, a gym that's typically a bit expensive, but I got fortunate in finding a really good price for it. So this one uh, is Lair. So I've always wanted to pick up Lair. The reason why I didn't was because, well, the motion controls. But then I heard how they patched in regular controls. I was like, oh, well, for sure I want to pick this up then. I wanted to pick it up because this is made by the individuals who made Star Wars Rogue Squadron. <laughs> and everyone's ever played that for the GameCube they, and the Nintendo 64. They know what a great game series that is. Um, so that's why even though I got bad reviews or mixed reviews when the patched controls came out I did want to purchase it, but I just st stuck away from it because again, I always heard uh, bad uh, Opinions about it. Give me a quick second. I'm checking when this game released 2007 So this might not have trophies. So let me quickly explain because I just said I have rules when it comes to that and The only games where I'll disregard the no trophy rule will be with exclusives uh, typically so that's why I decided to pick up Lair. Uh, I won't be picking up a game like Africa because to be honest, that's probably a game I won't be playing. <laughs> I was never a fan of things like Pokemon Snap. And uh, even if I had a Nintendo 64, I don't think I'll be buying that. So that's one game that I, I probably won't be picking up. Um, but yeah, so that's why I decided to pick up Lair because I do have a history with Rogue Squadron. I've always wanted to play it. And also Dragons. It's a lot of fun to ride dragons typically. I have Spiral for that, but you are the dragon. What if I want to ride a dragon? Um, I do enjoy A Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones, and House of Dragon, the House of Dragons. So uh, that might be where my little bias is coming from. And then also, I did watch Mystic's video, and um, he kind of made me um, go. Uh, he persuaded me to not dissuade me from not picking up the game. But I still had some mixed feelings because even he said in that video, that there are some elements that are fun, but some other elements that aren't. But what finally made me decide to pick it up was uh, a Food for Dogs, Brita, another a YouTuber. Um, and uh, she, she, she just emphasized how although the controls aren't all there, it's just a lot of fun, right? And isn't that what gaming is about? If one is having fun, then that should be the purpose of it and, and, uh, uh, and not a waste of money if indeed that fun factor is present. So, And I, that was fun not intended since uh, Factor 5 made this game, right? <laughs> I said fun factor. So yeah, so that's why I picked up Flair. I'm actually really excited to have this in my collection, mostly because back then when I first saw it, it was really cheap. It's still fairly cheap, but not as cheap as it used to be brand new. So dang, I could have picked it up for slightly cheaper, but oh well, one lives and learns, right? Uh, so then the last game I want to share is um, this one during the PS3 closure was one of those games along with Folklore, uh, the PlayStation Best of Collection, uh, 3D Dot Heroes, and a couple more that I can't recall off the top of my head, um, Shadows of the Damned, and... Um, Blades of Trinity or X-Blade, I forget what that one's called, but this one as well, El Shaddai, was one of those games that really shut up in price during the whole PlayStation closure. 
And um, thankfully, ever since then, it's still fairly expensive. You usually can find copies brand new for around 100 bucks, uh, hovering around that price. Uh, but I got fortunate in that. I usually send messages to the e eBay sellers asking if everything's good, the disc is not loose. I understand that the disc might come loose in transit, but I want to make sure before it's sent that it's in place. And the user was, uh, the seller was really friendly, really awesome. And after I sent my message and he replied and he responded to me, uh, he gave me this really great discount on it. I was shocked. I was very close to not getting it just because that that phrase, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. And I was like, well, why is he trying to get rid of this game? <laughs> is, is there a tear I'm not aware about? The seller did make sure to have plenty of pictures. Um, so I, I was not too concerned about the terror, but again, the terror, if there was one, but again, my, my, my gaming anxiety was just, well, what's going on here? He gave me a really great deal on it. Um, almost uh, around 15 bucks off, um, a brand new with free shipping. And that's why I, I made the choice to go ahead and, and, uh, pull the trigger. And, um, and yeah, I'm really happy to have this in my game collection. It's a, in a, a unique game. It's kind of an action game, but though not really. The fighting takes place. Yeah, the fighting takes place in a unique style, and the story. I've heard some great things about it as well. Really weird story, but apparently the kind of story that one wants to experience for themselves. So again, I'm really happy to have this in my collection. And I think I forgot to show the back for Lara. So let me quickly just do that, and then we show the back for El Shaddai. So again, here's Lara. A hero must rise from the ashes. I'm just looking at the pictures because the, the dragons are cool fighting, right? Uh, and then here's El Shaddai, Ascension of the Metatron. So this game does have a religious uh, a setting to it theme. And I think it's actually pretty cool because it's not too... Usually with the, when there's a religious setting that's more in line with JRPGs or games from um, uh, Japan. Uh, it's not too often where you get games from the West where they deal with religious or spiritual aspects. So that's pretty cool. Looking forward to finally playing that game when I get the chance. So yeah, so these are the games that I picked up recently. Um, I do have some other ones on the way. As I said in my other video, uh, I think I explained this. There's some games that I picked up that I own digitally, but I just never owned physically because they're the upgraded version. So a really good example would be the Batman Arkham series. Uh, I really owned those on my PS3. Uh, so then I got the PS4 version was on sale for really cheap. Um, but then I made the choice, well, and this was because of my Vita, I made the choice, well, I mean, I own it physically on my PS3 and I played it, and I've played it on my PS4, but don't I want to represent that physically? So I have that in the middle coming games that I own digitally, but I made the choice to never buy physically since I already owned the PS3 version. So I'm excited to share that with everyone when that finally comes in. Uh, but yeah, if anyone has any questions about the games that I bought, please do let me know. And um, yeah, thank you so much for your patience as we were at the beginning when I looked up Call of Juarez. Um, but yeah, you guys still picking up games? What kind of games are you picking up and from what systems? Uh, please feel free to share that if one wants to, if you're comfortable doing so. And how do you pick up your games? For Personally, for me, I've been using eBay and Amazon. And I'll probably be doing, in physical and person stores when I can, I'll probably be doing a separate video where I just discuss the, um, the pros and cons of online shopping versus um, buying things in person. And also eBay specifically versus uh, Amazon. Uh, but thank you so much for watching, everyone. As always, I really do appreciate it. Have a great day and take care.